Everybody, welcome back. It is another Friday video, and in this video, we shall be discussing start up costs. In my last Friday video, I was discussing uh, various bits and pieces, and within my discussion at the end of that video, I dropped into the conversation, uh, just it was just a flow of conscience. I dropped into the conversation, my startup costs here were about 150K. Uh, quite a few of you were asking, can I please break that down? How did I get to that figure? Why that figure? Uh, what's, what made up that cost? So that is gonna be this video. Now, if you like what you see at any point during the video, do remember to give us a like and subscribe because it really does make a difference to us. So let's get, uh, let's get straight on with it. So I'm gonna break down my costs from moving into this unit. So we're not talking about anything prior or before that point, I should say. So it's just gonna be the cost that I've incurred during this whole process of getting this unit here, getting it off the ground, getting everything to what you see today. So they are rough, you know, these are fag packet calculations because I'm, I'm not gonna go start going through bank statements to give exact figures. I can, from my memory, I can give you rough figures. So we're just gonna base it on rough figures, but actually it's gonna be surprisingly accurate. Uh, I'll start with the, the most major costs that we incurred. And the first one uh, was our memberships. So our first one was risks. So if you want to work on rail, uh, you have to be registered with uh, risks, which is this company right here. That cost us, I would say, in the region of about 25, K roughly. Consultants fees were a surprisingly large part of that and it's it's a very broad that's a very broad figure because it depends if you register for, for risks uh, depending on how many categories you select that will dictate what fee you end up paying. So for what the categories that we selected and what we wanted to do it came to roughly that figure ish. Now that includes, uh, a, there's a couple of things which are a bit of an unknown quantity, like your own personal time. So Sarah, you know, Vanita, they spent weeks dealing with this. Now, of course, all of that costs, I'm paying their wages. So I have to include that in those, in those costs. It's only fair. So about 25K. The next one was our HERS membership, Highway Electrical Register. That, I would say, to date has cost us about 20K. Risks didn't need as much training. Uh, there was actually very little training which was involved. It was more accreditation. Hers membership was a little bit different. There's a lot of training. It's a very, very training intensive exercise. So <clears throat> less consultation fees, but much more training. So about 20K, it hasn't actually finished yet. I would imagine it's probably about 25K. So probably about the same as risks by the time we actually get our highways card. So yeah, about 20K at the moment. Next one is our ISO membership. That is your ISO 9001 membership. We're not doing 14,001 and 48,000 and whatever other ones. We're just doing 9001. That is, I would say, about 3K. Haven't finished it yet, but about 3K. Uh, other credentials, safe contractor, yes. I would say that was about two grand, roughly. Let's say, let's say 2K. Uh, Chas, that's the next one. So probably about 2K, I would say, roughly, give or take. I've still got batteries. Yes, I've still got batteries on my mic. Excellent. <laughs> I did last Friday's video, did the whole front, I did the first half of it. Uh, battery, well, I didn't have any batteries in my mic. Talking away, no audio. <laughs> Excellent. Now, people do sort of at this point then start saying, well, why do you need all of these? What, you know, well, risks was rail, hers was highways, and th these are a lot easier to get, or not easier to get, but it's a smoother audit if you've got ISO registration and if you've got uh, if you have safe contractor it makes your risks audit a bit smoother and the same with your HERS registration and if you've got safe contractor that makes getting a CHAS membership a lot easier so they're sort of all intertwined you kind of need all of them so that was the reason we got them all and then of course you've got your NIC costs which is what 1500 quid roughly a year ish I actually can't remember off the top of my head, it's direct debit. So those are memberships. Now the other ones are insurance. Now, no one likes insurance, but unfortunately it is a necessity. So our insurance is quite expensive. I mean, actually I say quite expensive for the size of the business. It's not a huge business, only six of us, but I think for the outfit, I don't think it's that ex it's expensive, but it's not expensive if that makes any sense. So our fleet insurance, because we've got four vans, okay. That comes in at, I think, about 7,000, roughly. 
okay? Then the next one you've got is your um, public liability insurance. Now that liability, that's how it's spelt, yeah? Our liability insurance uh, is quite expensive. I think that is, again, I think it's about seven grand. Um, but that's expensive because we've got risks membership. When you have risks membership, you have to tell them that you're working on rail. And when you tell them you're working on rail, they're like, ah, excellent, lovely. Right, that's gonna cost you an extra five grand. So yeah, it does get quite expensive. So that's insurance policies. Uh, they're, I think there's one or two more, but they're nothing major. I'm just going with the bulk ones, which we had to get when we took, we started doing all this. What else have we got? I've got a little chart down here, because I'm never gonna remember this off the top of my head. Next one is vehicles. So, vehicle, I have no, it's, it's Friday and it's like nine o'clock at night. So I don't know if vehicles, yeah, that's spelt, cor <laughs> spelt correctly. So the next one is the truck, the bucket truck, the mupe. Bucket truck, mupe, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, so the truck. So we bought that when we got the units. Uh, that, that actually arrived March this year. Actually, that March, April this year. So we, that was a 10,000 pound deposit we had to pay. So we've got the truck on finance, but we had to put down a deposit to buy the truck. So that was 10,000 quid. Uh, we needed the truck because we're doing risks. And more importantly, that was connected to highways. So kind of, you can see where it's all going. It's all intertwined. Now that, I could have got that cheaper if I wanted to. However, if I'm gonna spend that sort of money, I want the vehicle that I want. I don't wanna cut corners and compromise, especially if you're gonna have a vehicle which is gonna service you for you know, the next five years or the next three, you know, three, four, five years. I want something that I'm comfortable with, that I know does the job. And yes, it may be more expensive, but it's gonna earn me money. So it was quite expensive. The truck came in at about, it's about 80,000 quid, that truck. It was quite an expensive bit of kit, but the deposit was 10K. Uh, what else have we got on the list? The Kangoo, yeah, our little Kangoo. So that, uh, again, financed it. Uh, don't use your own money, use the bank's money, but we won't have that conversation because we know uh, I got dragged over the coals last time I was talking about that. So that was a 3K deposit. Um, I don't know why it's such a contentious topic. I mean, we'll ignore the fact that multi-million pound companies use debt to grow, but we won't, we won't go into that. It's a contentious topic. Next one, what have we got, what have we got on the list here? Uh, so you bought the vehicles, but then you need the racking for the vehicles. Uh, you could just have an empty van, but that's not very efficient, and you'll spend more time on the side of the road in Baker Street looking for a box of one and a half inch eights, uh, and obviously that costs time, time is money. So especially when you're spending, you know, 12 pound an hour parking. So the racking was about, it's like five or six K roughly. Uh, next on the list is the unit itself. Yes, now the unit, this is really quick and dirty because it's Friday and I'm really quite tired and my hair's got concrete dust in it because uh, I've been chiseling walls all day. So I'm a little bit tired. So I'm just gonna rattle through this quickly. So. Uh, the, the unit, we, uh, when we took the unit out, it was, uh, it's not mortgaged, obviously it's rented. Uh, so that was, uh, we had to pay a deposit and then all the legal fees that were associated with it. So uh, deposit, so you're talking about, what was that, about 6K, somewhere around there. Uh, what else have we got? We've got the, ah, the racking in the unit, yes, got the racking. So in the back of the warehouse, you'll see all the racking that we've got. I've still got microphones, excellent. Uh, that's about a grand, the racking. It was cheap, cheerful racking for unscrew fix, but it does the job well here. Uh, then we've got uh, all of the equipment that goes in the unit. So we've got the, uh, all the cones and all the highway equipment. So cones and highway. You'd think I was a doctor with this handwriting, wouldn't you? Cones and highway equipment, that was, let's say a grand, roughly. It was a bit more than that, but let's just, let's not get too bogged down with technicalities. Uh, now, clothing and safety harnesses, yeah. So you bought the mupe, but then you've got to buy the restraints, lanyards, uh, all of the safety equipments, uh, the visors, uh, all the safe isolation equipment, do all the courses for the HERS membership. So it's all, again, all intertwined. You've got to do it. Uh, that, so safety equipment. My God, my handwriting's bad. Safety equipment came in at about 3K. Not bad, not bad. So then office supplies. So office supplies are things like the, uh, the towers, the monitors, hard drives, external ones, uh, the MacBook, the company phones, printers, laminators, all of the stuff which you would need. That came to about 10K, roughly. 
Uh, and then of course all the desks, chairs, all of that, you've got to, all that's all got to be kitted out. Got the radio system, yeah. So you know the, the 4G radio system that we have in the vans, you see that in the content quite a lot, all the handhelds and all the, all the units that go in the vans. That came to about, about 2K, including all the SIM cards and associated paraphernalia. Uh, branding, that was the next thing. Now branding, um, this is not an essential one, we chose to do it because I thought, look, if I'm in for a penny, in for a pound, let's just go all in and let's just do the whole lot. So that was where that logo came from. Uh, we had a designer to do it. It was actually quite interesting how that, uh, I'm just going off pissed here, how they came up with that concept. There was like three or four, it took four different designs until they came up with that one. Um, but I'll save that for another video, but quite interesting. So branding, that came to about three grand. So they, give, they, they come up with a design, then you go back to them and say, well, I'm not sure about that. Why have you done this? And keep doing that process. And eventually we got to that, about 3,000 quid. Uh, signage on the van, so to actually get these decals and then stick them on the vans and then have the ones on the side, have the one on the front of the unit. So signage, there's literally no point in me writing this because you just can't see it. Signage, that came to about three grand again. So that's all the vans. Uh, the chevrons, that's another one, don't forget, because you, in fact, there is a video of me putting the chevrons on. I was having a proper rant, actually, but for some reason that video never got released because I think the audio, there was an audio issue with it. Uh, but the, the chevrons, the prismatic chevrons, which you need for highways, uh, that was necessary. That was about 500 quid. So we'll put plus 500 quid like so um the website yes now we had a website uh but we decided that it was time to upgrade because um uh, to get into these two you yeah you know, we were moving out of domestic moving more into the commercial sector i wanted the website to reflect this it isn't finished yet uh, the web guy is still doing it um in fact, the only reason it's not finished is because I'm holding him up. Uh, but we spent about 10,000 quid so far on the website. It's still being worked on. It's almost finished. Um, but that's probably actually, uh, that's probably going to be about 15 by the time it's finished, I would say, roughly. I mean, I'm actually, no, do you know what? I'm going to say 13. No, 13's unlucky. 12. Yeah, that's better. Uh, probably hopefully about 12, 13 grand, somewhere around there by the time I get it finished. Um, it's not ready yet because he's actually, the web. Dill, uh, the guy's name, it's, he's waiting on me for a load of photographs and all of that jazz, which I just haven't given him yet. So he's basically, I'm the, the spanner in the works. That's the uh, sort of rough initial cost. There's probably some other bits I've forgotten, but on top of that, you've got all the other miscellaneous stuff. So all the things like uh, in, well, everything, all of the stuff in the kitchen from the kettle, the toaster, the uh, fridge freezer, the washing machine, the gym room, the uh, all of the new lighting which I had to buy, uh, all the lights on the front of the building which I had to buy, all of that has to come out of, uh, you know, that has to come out of a budget and, you know, everything, the food, drinks, uh, you know, all the paraphernalia, extra ladders I've had to buy. Uh, that's the other thing, actually. I didn't, uh, where's that gone? That was on my list. Uh, scaffolding, actually. Uh, bought a GRP scaffold uh, because, again, risks. You can't use metal. You've got to use GRP. That was uh, about 2,000 quid. Um, and then the miscellaneous stuff, so all of the other stuff which is needed, so everything from plates, cutlery, tea bags, uh, you know, fridge freezers, washing machines, uh, you know, just all the other stuff, pens, uh, the mar whiteboard, marker pens, all of this. Uh, I would say that probably came to another 10k, roughly. You'd be amazed how fast it adds up. I have had about nine cups of coffee before I recorded this, so I'm talking at like 100 miles an hour. Now, the interesting part of this is that if I do this, right, take those away, people look at it and say how, how you know, they walk in and they're like, 150K, really? <sighs> nah, it can't be. The problem is, if I do this, all of that stuff there is all invisible. All of it's tacit. It's all stuff which you need, but you can't actually see it. All of this stuff here is all, you know, you can physically see it. It, it has a, a physical presence in this world. All of this stuff is just, it's just, digital smeg you know you don't you can't see any of it and you that's actually the bulk of the startup costs is actually up here in all the stuff that you can't see but the stuff that you've got to have so all of this is all yeah like you know it's probably about equal amounts actually but maybe a little bit more actually up here i just work it out do you know what? i'm not even going to try and be impressive and work that out in my head i'm just gonna use an iphone so that comes to about 68k up there roughly 
and then down here I make that about 62k so combined you're talking about a hundred and about 130,000 quid roughly so I have there's about 20 grand there I haven't accounted for, but I stocked the racks, uh, all the racks up with materials and stuff. So that would easily have been, we'll just put equipment, came to about 10K. That is a complete shot in the dark figure, but I typically about 10K's worth of fuse boards, RCBOs, lights, down lights. And again, that was because I wanted speed and efficiency. So rather than keep having to get the guys going out to the wholesalers every single day, they can just get everything they need here and it keeps things faster and that enables more time on the road, more chance to earn money. So it just keeps, you know, that keeps the, the financial ball rolling, as it were. So yeah, I mean, my shot in the dark figure of my last video of 150, it's not a million miles off, and there's not a lot here which you could trim. Uh, your insurance policies, I could have got cheaper liability insurance, but the more you trim it down, the, the more likely they are to not pay out. You know, the more comprehensive your insurance is, Yes, it gets more expensive, but it's it's a safer policy. And right now, in the position the business is in, I don't want to take risks. I just want, you know, I want it. I want to know that I've got the peace of mind to have insurance policies. If anything goes wrong, I know they'll pay out, you know, or there's a very high chance they'll pay out. Uh, all of these can't do anything. All those, those costs, they just, they are what they are. Vehicles, again, can't do anything with those. Racking, uh, I, you know, I'll, set, I'll put the ones in yellow that you could probably have some wiggle room with. The racking, um, potentially, uh, you could, if you wanted to do it on the cheap, you could do it cheaper than that. I just, I love Sortimo, so I just wanted to go with that. Um, what else have we got? Uh, can't do anything with any of those. Uh, equipment in the warehouse, yeah, 10K. You could just go to, you know, your wholesaler screw fix every day and save that. I chose not to because I think it's more efficient to have everything here and it keeps the guys working more, brings more money in, more money in, less stress. So I th I personally don't think you can alter that one, but again, if you wanted to, you could. Uh, office supplies, you could probably do it on the cheap. I mean, I've done this on the cheap, but it's amazing how fast these things add up. If you go to like eBay or somewhere and just, just start putting desks and tough books and all of this stuff in your basket, it just you know, before you know it, it's just, it's thousands. So radio system, probably could have done away with that. So that was a bit of a luxury there, but not a huge amount. Uh, branding, that could have been avoided. Um, I could have stuck with my old branding. I chose not to though, because I just think that it looks more professional. And if you're going into this line of work here, I think a professional image counts. And I think having branding that, um, I just think, I think it, it pays itself, you know, it, I think, it's late and I'm stuttering, but you get the gist. I think it pays for itself. So yeah, potentially you could do something with that. Signage, can't do anything with that. Website, uh, I chose to have the website redone because I just, again, branding, I think it's important. I could have gone along with the old website, so I could have saved a bit there potentially. Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, the miscellaneous stuff, can't do anything about that. All, you know, everything that's here is just, it is what it is. You can't alter it. So there's not a lot there you can shave off the bone, but it is what it is. So those are my figures. Uh, I hope that helps uh, anybody who's, you know, if you're in the position that I was in where you were on your own, you're thinking of expanding. There are people who say, well, do you actually need a unit? Absolutely, I think you do. I don't see how you can. I was actually having this conversation with James uh, over there over a coffee this morning. I don't think you could do an operation. I don't think you could get into this sort of work without having a unit. You need to be able to have somewhere that's big. You can just dump all of your stuff like cones, signage, traffic equipment, uh, you know, all of this stuff, street lights, you need to be able to have somewhere you can store this. And also because I wanted a place where we can work together, like a, a hive, a nest almost, that somewhere that is a base that everybody can work from. Uh, because I was saying this in previous content that a lot of, uh, there's a, a British Gas actually, they've, um, they've shut down all their warehouses and stuff and that everybody, all of their engineers work remotely now. So they all just get emailed the jobs every day, but the engineers never actually see other engineers or like the office and stuff. Very cost efficient, but it's also very clinical. And I didn't want that. I, again, going back to my last video, I want, you know, I want to help people. I want to build something, grow something, you know, go somewhere. And I, to do that, I wanted this. So I think it's important and I don't think we can do without it. Um, 
So yeah, also the other reason is because when you're tendering for larger works, it's not written anywhere, but it's like an unwritten rule that when you're tendering for larger work, they want to see that you've got a VAT number. They want to see you have an official unit somewhere. They want to see these things. And I don't think you can, I personally don't think you can get around it. And it just looks better. It just looks like you've got your, you've got your shit together. You know what you're doing, you know where you're going. And it also, it kind of subconsciously says, you know, we're here, we're permanent. We're not going anywhere. This is a, this is, you know, it's a sure thing. We're here to stay. And you're sort of saying all of those things again, through branding, you're, you're, you're repeating all of that, but without actually saying it. So I think it's important. And for that reason, I don't think there's a huge amount here that you can shave off, but leave your thoughts and comments below. Um, and if that helps anybody who's, uh, you know, if you're on your own and you're thinking of growing and expanding, again, I mean, these Renault Traffics, uh, these are bought and paid for. I actually made the final payments uh, this month, actually. Um, but that was a grand a month. They're 500 pound a month each. So that was a grand a month, but they're fully paid for now. So, cause I got those on a three year deal. But yeah, beyond that, there's, I'm trying, there's no other major costs I can think of, but if there is, I'll leave, I'll update the description below and I'll put some, if there are any other additional costs, I'll put them below. But as a rule of thumb, I think that gives you a pretty good gauge. Uh, leave all your comments, uh, good, bad, indifferent, doesn't matter, just put it all below. And thank you very much for watching and we will see you on Monday's video. Right, six o'clock, I shall now go home a very angry partner. Although that's not, she's, she's not actually angry because I earned some brownie points last night because I picked her up at about 2 a.m. because she was out fagging and beering. So I earned some brownie points there. It's always good to earn brownie points with your partner, you know? It's always good. It's a good thing to earn brownie points because what the great thing about brownie points is that you can cash them in, you know? And this is the great thing, especially if you're working for yourself and you've got to learn and understand this. If, if you've got a partner, you know, boy or girl, doesn't matter. Uh, you, you, at some point, you're, you're going to screw up. And that's a fundamental flaw in working for yourself. At some point, you're going to drop a cog and, you know, you, your wife, she's going to be unhappy with you. And you've got to have a little nest egg of brownie points that you can cash in when you make a mistake, you know. So like... A penny went out fagging and beering, you know, and I had to go and pick her up at about two o'clock in the morning from King's Cross Station, uh, you know, and I didn't want to, but obviously I've done that, but I know, I didn't say this, but I know it, and she also knows it, that that's like brownie points, you know, that, that's, I've, there's like five brownie points I've earned, and that's now gone in the pocket, and then when I screw up, which is more than, I'm, I'm going to screw up at some point next week, maybe I'll have to cash in two of those brownie points, but I'll still have three in reserve, so it's always good, o occasionally you've got to do stuff that you can earn brownie points on, it's very important, I did explain this concept to Penny, and she said that's complete nonsense, but every guy that I've spoken to all agree with that, so yeah, anyway, the fact that I'm, it's a Friday and I'm not home yet, I'm going to have to cash in some of those brownie points. But that's not worth five brownie points. That's like two brownie points. Of course, the other thing you've got to be careful with is that you then, if you, if you screw up really badly, and we're talking like a big, big mistake, right? If you haven't got enough brownie points saved up, you then go into what's called a brownie deficit. And then that's really bad because then you've used all the brownies that you had and you're, you now owe brownies back. And the only way that that can be cured is with flowers and chocolates. Uh, Prosecco is what Penny likes. So, and then you have to do that thing. It's not, it's, it's not a cool look when you're standing in Tesco or worse, in a petrol station, and you're standing there with petrol station flowers and a bottle of cheap Prosecco because everyone looks at you like, they all know that you've cocked up and that's not, you're not doing that because you love it. You're doing that to say, sorry, it's not a cool look. So don't ever get in brownie deficit. That's a bad place to be.